first of all, Paul, it's fantastic to have you with us here um, in the kind of inner sanctums of Goodison Park. Mm -hmm. um, um, your move to Everton come about. Um, can you just tell us a little bit how it came about. Did you receive a phone call? Did you did you know Everton were interested in signing no, you? No, I had no idea actually, and uh, it came as a complete surprise. Um, my wife was pregnant at, at the time, and I uh, actually went on holiday. Uh, to a, a place called the Sultan Sands Hotel, which is just in North Devon, and um, we'd normally go abroad. I hadn't told anybody where we were going, so I was like amazed when um, we came back into the hotel and there was a message. Uh, could I phone Jimmy Frizzell, who was the assistant manager at the time? So I, uh, I phoned Jim. He said that uh, Howard Kendall had been on the phone. Uh, the two clubs had agreed a fee. Uh, was I interested? I'd just signed a, a one-year extension contract at Manchester City. I was 32 at the time. Uh, I suppose had I reached 33, then I would have been entitled to a, a free transfer. Uh, so it was good business. It was good business actually, um, you know, for Manchester City to sell me uh, for about 75,000, I think it was, uh, because they had Andy Hinchcliffe who later came to play for Everton as well, uh, they had him in the youth team uh, and are ready to take the, the left back spot at Manchester City, so I suppose it was a move that suited everybody. And, and was it an easy decision, Paul? Because obviously you know, your connection to Manchester City as well, was it hard to leave that? Well, it wasn't an easy decision because uh, I was due a testimonial at Manchester City and um, Obviously, if I left and became an Everton player, uh, then you know it, it would have affected the the testimonial game. I, I wouldn't have known whether I'd have got testimonial game. Howard uh, actually said that he would play the first game of the season against Manchester City, and it could be my testimonial. Uh, so it worked out that I was an Everton player when I had my testimonial for Manchester City. You know, so um, but. But yeah, not, not a difficult decision at all. I mean, Everton the season before had finished runners up, I think, in the in the league and the cup. Um, a really successful team, a lot a lot of uh, skillful players like I said, Trevor Stephen and Kevin Sheedy, you know, and Sharpie and Inchi and all those uh, good players at the time. It was easy for me to come and and be a part of that and settle in quite nicely, you know. So. Um, yeah, no problem. Definitely. But, uh, what was it like playing in that team? Because obviously that team's regarded as probably one of Everton's best teams. It mm -hmm. must have been a fantastic time to be part of it. Yeah, well, I think I think uh, the understanding was that I would come as a squad player. Um, as it turned out, Pat Van Den Howe uh, had an ankle injury, which was quite long term. He was he was out for most of the start of the 1986 season. So I played at left back and uh, my first real competitive game for Everton was the um, Charity Shield at Wembley. Like So, uh, fantastic start. I started quite well, so I think the fans sort of took to me a little bit. If I'd have struggled being a mank, then I would have probably had a hard time, like, you know, but as it turned out, uh, we, we kept winning. We were up near the top of the league and uh, uh, and I played up until just after Christmas at left back. Pat Van Den Howe then became fit and uh, he, he came straight back into left back and at, the, at that time Kevin Sheedy got injured so I sort of moved into left side of midfield and uh, I ended up playing 40 games out of the 42. Uh, the last two I missed um, when we, after we'd won the, the, um, the championship at Norwich I missed the last two games uh, I think it was Tottenham and somebody else at home uh, because I had a knee injury and I wanted to get some surgery on it as, as soon as I could and give myself as, as much time to recover as possible, you know, but it was never really the same after that. And as you said, you were quick to win the Everton fans over. Did you see that as important to, when you were wearing that Everton shirt to have that connection with the fans? Yeah, and well, the supporters? I think it would have been difficult for me um, had I not uh, won the players over. And I know. Uh, Phil Neville had a very similar problem when he came from United, and you know, I'd, I, it took him time to settle. Once he realised he was a good pro, and he, you know, he was uh, he was working hard for the cause, then you know, that's I think that's what you need to do to win Everton um, Everton supporters over. And I, I spoke to Adrian Heath, and 
he said, listen, just slide off your feet, put a, slide off onto the pitch. They'll love you more if you do that than, uh, you know, than if you do anything spectacular with the ball. Like so, uh, and I'd always been that sort of player that, you know, I was totally committed because I wasn't the most skillful. So it was the only thing I could do basically, you know. So yeah, it worked out quite well in the end. And Paul, just really a final point. Um, you said you're working at Manchester City now in the academy mm -hmm. setup, but do you still get the opportunity to follow and keep an eye on Everton's results? I know you're obviously linked with City now. Yeah, yeah. Of course, you must keep an eye on Everton. Yeah, so. absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, I was. Um, I was very close to uh, to Ray Hall, and well, not very close, but but I had a long association with uh, Ray Hall and um, and Neil Dewsnip, you know, who who were involved at the academy, and then of course Kevin Sheedy became involved with the academy. So there's always been a link between uh, the Man City and the Everton academies, but. Yeah, I mean, Everton's my second team, you know, uh, a lot of Evertonians won't, won't want to hear that, but I was brought up as a Manchester City fan, uh, I played for them for like, you know, 400 games, so City will always be my first team, I work for them now, you know, so, uh, but, but I loved my time at Everton, brief as it was. Um, you know, it was a, it's a fantastic football club, very, very similar to Manchester City in a lot of ways, you know, because they sort of lived in the shadow of the neighbours for a little while and uh, at that time when I was at Everton, obviously, Everton went past Liverpool at that stage and they shared a lot of uh, good moments and um, I, think, I think there was a, a sort of a, a, a nice atmosphere about Liverpool and Everton supporters because they'd both been successful. Yeah. It was different at City because United had been so successful, City hadn't had much success so there was a lot of bitterness there but uh, irrespective of that I, I had, a, had a wonderful time at Everton. Yeah.